Howdy folks, this is a continuation segment from part 7 LPGC Cargo Operations. In part 7a, we shall use a demo simulation to give you a better overview. All related discharge matters for LPG ships will be tackled. Kindly click on the subscribe button before we proceed. This would motivate me to improve and make more presentation better. And likewise, lay down your comments, suggestions, or scrutiny. Let's begin. In most cases, with regards to the bill of lading for all shipping operators, on board ships, by default, the master has the Xerox copy only. In this respect, cargo discharge can start once the LOI or letter of indemnity is received. With such and all the pre-discharge meeting done, checklist and requirements met, manifold lines connected, in turn, the ship can notify its readiness to start. Once given at this point, the vessel will wait for the terminal signal. Once they are ready to receive, thereafter the discharge may commence. Some shore terminals work at higher temperature or pressure than those for which the ship cargo tanks are designed. To empower the ship to unload when this is the situation, the ship is outfitted with a system containing booster pumps and heat exchangers. These equipments are possible for different combination and configuration lined up to meet the desired criteria. Discharging cold cargo to shore tanks not designed for low temperature will require a heating of the cargo during discharge. The cargo is heated in a heat exchanger, or commonly termed as cargo heaters, by means of seawater as heating medium. And so with no much further ado, let's proceed. And I'll be using this uh, Lodicator as a model. At the same time, I'll be showing the simulator in just a short while. So as you can see, this is the uh, so-called uh, vessel. Uh, it has uh, uh, four cargo tanks. And uh, I'll show you right now. This is the cargo tanks. And there you go. We have uh, one, two, three, and four. Port and starboard port number one, port and starboard, and so on and so forth. And the uh, ballast tank, we have the wing tanks, uh, as you can see here also, they are empty. And the, the double bottom tanks are empty as well. And you'll find here also other uh, liquid uh, cargo tanks. Uh, there are four different water, other uh, liquids such as uh, fuel oil and this. So we didn't need to discuss them accordingly. And of course, in here, uh, we have also the uh, shear forces and bending moments. And as you can see right now, the parameters are well within the limits, so maximum limits of shear forces and bending moments required by the company. And we have also a uh, writing arm and GZ. And you'll notice here also that uh, the cargo is fully filled at 98%, as you can see here. So we will be discharging four cargo tanks. Now, this is a fully refrigerated uh, type of LPG ships. But uh, of course, uh, likewise, uh, since we will be discharging different scenario of configuration of discharging and uh, arrangement like uh, heating with booster with the fresher uh, discharge then i'll be of course uh, tackling also other uh, related matters for poly pressurized uh, lpg vessels so uh, and to further complete the uh, presentation then i'll be using the so-called uh, simulator in of course in parallel with the lodicator that i've shown in here uh, you can you'll find that it has uh, four tanks as well and four the starboard one two and three and four and of course we have the ballast tanks now, of course, uh, I'll be uh, showing you the cargo pipelines layout, and this is the one, and of course, uh, the manifold and cargo tanks uh, for one and two. Likewise, uh, I've mentioned also about the glycol system, which we'll be discussing about, and of course, particularly on the manifold system, we talk about the booster pumps and the heater. Of course, uh, normally, uh, we should be uh, connected right now, so we'll just put this on, and of course, we'll use uh, two manifolds. Uh, just for the sake of uh, discussion and of course let's just assume that we have been told by the terminal that they are ready to receive and they would want to have a line displacement first and that of course the uh, discharge uh, rate will be at the uh, lowest or uh, minimum initial uh, is low rate only so let's just uh, put it this way that uh, we open also one of the forward manifold parts and of course uh, we are lined up and uh, later on i'll be discussing if we will be using the booster pump or cargo heater as per pre-discharge agreement of course that will follow later so uh, as of now we'll just go the uh, discharge uh, using a cargo or centrifugal pump and without a cargo heater or cargo booster pump so in here uh, we go to the cargo pipelines again and as you can see of course uh, by default um, all the uh, vapor lines are open one two three and four and make sure that the uh, so-called uh, leveling valve are open for each tank. Remember that uh, you have a bulkhead uh, for each tank because uh, they are segregated with bulkheads and you have a port and starboard, but 
the vapor are common. I'm talking about fully refrigerated. Of course, we will be discussing fully pressurized as well, so that uh, there won't be much of any confusion. I'll start with this one first. And of course, they are all interconnected. I mean, uh, one and two system and two and three, one and four system and two and three are common for the vapor and liquid line. So they can go all the way to the manifold. And likewise, the vapor are interconnected uh, one, two, three, and four. This way, you give it gives you a better uh, control of your pressure. They are distributed evenly. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, terminal mentioned already that uh, they are ready to receive, and so we open the manifold valve. And we go to, let's say, cargo tank number one. So, we will be using first the uh, one tank uh, on the port side, uh, one pump, I mean. So, this one. So, in practices, uh, we open a little bit the uh, discharge part, uh, crack open. And of course, uh, the other uh, loading discharge line, uh, we only crack open a little bit the circulation line. So that even if we start the pump, it just goes back to the liquid line. Now, cracking open the discharge valve is better. Uh, unlike other centrifugal pumps, uh, they can be closed uh, even with the start of the pump. But with the deep well pumps, uh, it is advisable, uh, check your manufacturer's uh, maker anyway, uh, that the discharge valve should be open. Because you have a, a height of a liquid column and you don't want the uh, uh, burst of pressure that will smash or hit the discharge valve, uh, valves and it may destroy your... Uh, pipes and bulbs so it should be cracked open so again we can now uh, start and put the on for the uh, cargo pump port side so as you can see it has started you'll find here the amperage and the discharge pressure and of course uh, on the manifold side the crew or if the officers in there then they'll be able to uh, report back immediately if there is a flow of liquid immediately i forgot to push this <laughs> one as well but as you can see in two and three the system it goes out and goes to your manifold so they should be able to be uh, able to read a reading in the gas pressure for your discharge and likewise they should be able to see visually the uh, line that there is a condensed uh, formation of ice uh, it happens because of the air humidity so they'll be able to see and likewise they will be able to check uh, round about the uh, deck area to see if there are leakage if this is stable and of course you could uh, correspond with the uh, terminal you could ask them if you can increase they will let you know so let's just assume that uh, they tell you to uh, increase again and so uh, we could uh, increase again by uh, going back to your cargo tanks and uh, we can of course uh, open more of your discharge uh, bump so you just put it to uh, fully open and of course uh, the circulation bump we can uh, put it to fully close and as you can see in the cargo pipelines uh, this is uh, fully open i mean should be fully open and it's not discharging towards your two entry manifold and of course, the uh, gas pressure for the discharge uh, will be changing uh, dynamically. And of course, uh, you'll get a higher uh, discharge pressure. It should be uh, equivalent to the uh, discharge reading or the pressure reading that you have in your consoles in your uh, cargo control room. So uh, this should be, uh, if it goes as well, then of course, uh, uh, everything is stable, then you can, of course, add uh, one more pump, like starting the other one as well. So you can open this one and then, of course, uh, crack it open and of course you start the pump for the starboard side so there you go you have the rpm and the discharge pressure and then likewise again and again every time the terminal asks for an increase and then they will let you know and then increase to maximum uh, they will uh, of course uh, notify you then of course you can increase to your manual then of course you can start uh, lining up uh, the rest of your uh, cargo tanks Say for example, uh, you started one and you might start with the uh, number three as well. So of course make sure that uh, the uh, uh, leveling bulb are open as well. So it should be open. And let's just say uh, we, we start as well uh, cargo pump number one for, uh, I mean port side for number three. So this is number three. And then uh, I'll start a number one port side. And then likewise I'll start a um, starboard side. So slowly, of course, I am now. I mean, I'm now increasing the discharge pressure. If you go to cargo pipelines, you can see here that the discharge valve are throttled so that I could control the discharge pressure. And eventually, I will be able to uh, discharge all uh, four cargo tanks uh, simultaneously. That depends on my stability dynamics. So likewise, I should be uh, able to look at my uh, discharge plan, and uh, of course, uh, if uh, ballast is uh, ready then uh, it should go concurrently 
you see, you have to understand as well the rate of capability of your discharge uh, ballast pump. I mean, the loading rate of ballast tanks because this is coincide with your discharging. Otherwise, you might end up uh, stopping your discharge if you cannot uh, put in your, uh, uh, I mean, you have a slow loading rate for your ballast tank. So they have to go dynamically that there won't be any issues with your air drop. At the same time, there won't be any issues with your uh, stability, especially with your shear forces and your bending moment and your, of course, your GM. So this has to be, of course, uh, double check and uh, monitor every now and then. That's why in the discharge planning, you are forecasting not only every two hours or three hours. Actually, if you can do it in a shorter period, like every one hour or even less, depending on the uh, condition of your uh, ships. But uh, uh, this should have been uh, prepared in advance. And of course, if you have experience with the ship in the previous uh, voyages, then it's quite more easier to uh, do so. But of course, if you are newly uh, assigned to a different vessel, then you have to adjust accordingly, despite that you might have records on board already. Or even if you have a ship which is uh, having her maiden voyage, so everything is new. So just, you just have to understand the impact of uh, so-called stability on your vessel with regards to whether loading or discharging, ballasting or deballasting. So this is how a discharge of a cargo uh, until you maximize it to your full uh, discharge rate uh, in that as uh, required by the terminal. Using, using a discharge uh, centrifugal deep well pumps only. So in the next uh, <clears throat> discussion, I'll be talking about the um, combination of booster pumps and cargo heaters. Now, as I mentioned earlier with regards to ballasting, of course, uh, uh, common sense uh, dictate if you offload a certain weight in a certain area, then uh, most likely the ballast thing will take place also close to that area. But of course, again, it depends on your ship's uh, dynamic with regards to stability. So as you can see here right now, I am already lined up for uh, ballasting. So uh, since I have uh, started on uh, cargo tank number uh, one and three, then I might as well just put in some ballast and double buttons for number two and number uh, three port and starboard. Or I could put in a little bit on the aft wherein uh, it's close to uh, number three cargo tank. So in here, I'll just start the uh, was uh, cargo pumps and there you go uh, I mean the ballast pump and uh, there you go I am now putting in some liquids in the uh, ballast tanks and of course I have mentioned again and again you have to make sure that the capability of your uh, ballast pumps can uh, actually put in the ballast required for your ships while uh, in concurrent to the discharge rates that you have been told to do so or you're maximized to do so Otherwise, you will have an issue with a lot of things like your drops, your stability dynamics, and your air drops. So this has to go concurrently at the same time or in parallel. So you just have to play and juggle everything uh, with your uh, right, right planning and decision.